super good to be with you guys today, and uh, wow, wasn't that amazing just to see those uh, those those few snippets? Uh, I'm so thankful that you you guys waddled into church today, and uh, you know. I, we're all going to need to change. We probably have to make sure that we have a permanent umbrella with us at all times. But uh, it's super good to be together today. And, and we realize, though, as we see the rain coming down, that there are a lot of people uh, in South Texas who are going through a lot. And so, if you will, let's just go to the Lord in prayer and uh, just go on, go on in behalf of our brothers and sisters in South Texas. Lord, today as we hear the rain, Lord, we know that... Uh, for some of the folks in South Texas, rain is not very welcome right now. And uh, some of them have been displaced. And Lord, many of them have been in dangerous situations. And Lord, even some now are contemplating what to do next. And so Lord, we we pray for your saving hand and saving grace to be upon them. And Lord, for them to know right now how much you love them. And Lord, I pray that uh, as we learn even today about how to, how to be hands and feet, from a global perspective, Lord, help us not to forget our, our friends in South Texas. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to respond in a way that shows your love. Lord, we just, uh, we do pray today for life. Lord, and we, we know the most important thing is eternal life. And Lord, we, we do pray for those folks. And Lord, we lift them up. And Lord, we pray that uh, you do some amazing things even now. Lord, uh, I pray that for the time that we have together today, Lord, that you would be present, that you would speak, and Lord, that, uh, that you would be known here. Lord, I am so thankful to be home. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm super excited to be with you guys today. And, uh, you know, I, I had an opportunity this morning to, to, to teach and brawl, and, and it couldn't have been different worship services from being over in Kenya um, and experiencing worship. They typically have uh, three or four drums and they play in this weird syncopated pattern that even Paul can figure out. And, and then, you know, we've got all that rhythm going on and then and then we head over to Thrall. And can I just say that rhythm isn't something that they understand very well? Um, and speaking from somebody who's rhythmically challenged. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's been such an interesting uh time to be back and it's good to be back kids um in the back corner back here miss valerie is standing there so you guys um k through five if you'll work your way back to the back of the room miss valerie is going to set you guys up assembly line style she's got some things for you guys um so kids go ahead and go back and uh, go ahead and grab that you know it's been an amazing it's been amazing two weeks that we were we were gone but it, you know it wasn't it wasn't a trip, it was a, it was a mission. We got to be on mission and to, to spend some time with some amazing folks, um, some of our Kenyan brothers and sisters. And, and it's hard to tell the stories of all the two weeks in, in just 25 minutes, but I want to tell you that there were stories of laughter and, and, and hardship and smiles and sorrow and connection and heartfelt goodbyes. But if we think of our Go Kenya mission as a two-week period in time, we'll, we'll miss out on the fact that it wasn't something that started on August 8th and ended on August 22nd. No, it was something that began in the heart of the Lord many years previous. And we got to be and get to be the hands and feet of God. One of the things that I want to do today is just help you to understand a little bit about what happened, what we experienced, and you can't tell the story of Kenya without telling the story of the Kenyan people. Uh, we worked with a group, uh, two different churches, one in Kenal and one in Makuyu, and no matter how much I try, I still can't say those two words without a West Texas accent, so you just have to understand that they would say that a little bit different. Um, but that's okay. They uh, they just kind of smile when I say it. But but the Kenyan people specifically are very warm, very receptive, a very loving people. And uh, we were the whole group of folks, the whole team was received with open arms, and and we had just a, a wonderful time together. But you know, when I think of Kenya, 
the first thing that always comes to my mind is, so we got the two churches, we got Kenal and we got Makuyu. Makuyu is the more rural. And, and this picture here on the screen is the first picture that comes into my mind when I think of Kenya. This is about a half a mile stretch of road. On your left side, you'll see that's actually part of the school and actually the part of the church where they meet. But this red dirt road reminds me of Kenya. It's the first image that always comes to my mind. And, and uh, you know, it's interesting. One of the days that we were there, I think it was the third day, uh, it was on a Wednesday, and had 200 kids out in the courtyard um, at Makuyu. And they were having a great time. They were doing some crafts and they were learning. And, and uh, as prone to be from time to time, sometimes I can just find, even in the midst of being in a large group of people, I can find myself off in my own little world. And uh, I was. I, uh, I was looking at the, the red dirt road. Now, what you can't see very well is the bushes and the trees and the houses and the roofs and everything that you see is covered in this red Kenyan soil. And as I was seeing that, I was just uh, I was off my own world and Tom, one of the guys from Thaw, walked, walked up to me and he didn't interrupt me. It was actually kind of fun to share with him, but he says, what are you thinking? And I said, well, you know, I, I'm seeing this red dirt. And I'm reminded that just like that red dirt gets all over us, um, some of you guys, I'm, I'm wearing a pair of jeans that I wore in Kenya, and I've washed them, but there's still the red dirt there if you look really close. But I just told Tom that just like the dirt gets all over us, the Kenyan people do the same thing. That it, it, it's just been a, it was an amazing experience to once again get to, to, to be on mission and to, to be in Kenya. And I'm so thankful that I got to, to do that. You know, for me, when we have, we've done some, some holiday Bible clubs or vacation Bible schools or whatever you want to say, one of my favorite parts is, or actually my favorite part has always been when it comes to, to snack time. We've, we've done the Bible story, we've done the crafts, and we've, done, we, we, we've told the story, we've, we've proclaimed the truth of God. And then we get to watch these couple of hundred Kenyan kids walk through a line and get, well, the best thing I can describe it is a homemade hot dog mug. And so, now when I was in church as a kid, we did Tang, okay? I don't know if you guys did that. But but they get something like Tang, and I, you know, I get to watch them, and they're, they're enjoying it. And, and, and for me, it's always comforting because I know that those 200 kids, some of them, that's the only meal that they're going to get that day. And it's, it's fun to, to see them partake and just enjoy. But, but this week... This past week, what was amazing to me was, without me saying anything, I wanted our team to make sure that as the Kenyan kids walked away from Holiday Bible Club, that they were greeted once again. And, and one of the things that's exciting to me is they still remember how to fist bump. I taught them that a couple of, a couple of years ago. And so they're fist bumping and they're shaking hands. But there's a personal touch that happens that says to each one of those kids, hey, you matter. We see you, and we hope to see you again. And so the whole 13 uh, group of, of Mazungus, that's, that's how you say Cracker and, uh, and, and Kikuyu, or actually in Swahili, when they saw us, and when the last thing that they saw each day was, was a handshake and a, and a hug. And, and it reminded me that even though the people that we worked with over in Kenya spoke different language like they typically speak Kukui which is their native tribe and they also speak Swahili and some of them English is like their third language that they don't even really learn to fourth grade. One of the things that was amazing to me is in that moment as the Kenyan kids would leave and they were they were showered with affection what it reminded me is that there is a universal language of love that covers all the things that we can't do. And, and you know, Dr. Gary Chapman has, has taught a study in, in many times about the love language, the five love languages, and they're the, the typical ones that we know. They're, there's physical touch. There's the giving of gifts. There's quality time. There's words of affirmation. And there's acts of service. And what I can tell you is the, the Go Kenya team did all five of those love languages in an amazing way, in a very giving way, and I'm so thankful that as a church you saw fit to send us, and that even though you sent us, you went with us. Through your prayers, 
through your financial support, through your ongoing care for our families. You know, we, we can't go as a church without those who stay behind. And, uh, you know, many of us went, but many of us stayed behind. And I appreciate you guys so much loving us enough to go. You know, last week, as Danny taught about global missions, there was a, 30, a team of 30-plus Kenyans and Texans living it out. And I want you to know that that team did an exceptional job. And I'm super proud of them in the most biblically proud way I can be. I am super thankful for them. You know, when we started out, we would load the bus, and we had a bus that, that carried about 30, okay? Or excuse me, it had a capacity of 30, supposedly, all right? And it would take us anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to load that bus every day. And one of the things that I told our team is, we have a bus that has a capacity of 30, but don't be surprised if we don't have 35 to 40 in the bus from time to time. And so we would load that thing up. And one of the things that Mara did, and I'm so thankful, is from day one that we were together, when we, were, we started with the Kenyan students, and, and, and I'll tell you more about the vision in a second, but Mara said, okay, now, now I want you guys to understand, Kenyans have not figured out yet that there is America, okay? What they do understand is there's Texas, okay? So, so when we showed up, we weren't Americans, we were Texans, okay? And so Mara started off by pairing us, one Kenyan and one Texan. And I'm happy to tell you that by the end of the trip, we weren't Kenyans and Texans. We were brothers and sisters. And so mission means to be brothers and sisters. And for us, when, when I think about that mission, it all comes down to the Great Commission. And it's found in Matthew 28, 18 and 20. It's our key verse. It's something that I want you, if you're not, to commit to memory. But to realize these are our marching orders. They're the last words of Christ, so they must be important. It simply says this, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. There it is. Them, did you catch it? We're to go to them. It's, it's to get moving. It's not to wait around. We as a church choose to adopt the love that God has for the world. And we put our money, our body, and our lives on the line because God so loved us, we choose to love the world. It's what we do. And when it comes to global missions, when it comes to being on mission globally, I've heard it put this way. There are three kinds of people. Those who give, those who journey, and those who are unfaithful. You know, it's a little harsh, but there's a lot of truth in that. But for the Great Commission, I gather this. That we're to have a unified, that means together, a unified effort given to us from the Lord Jesus Christ. That we be on mission to accomplish His work throughout the world and not just the one percent in which we live. You see, when I read the Great Commission, I don't see anything about Round Rock, Texas. I see something about the whole world. And we are called to the whole world. It's so our key truth today. This ought to be familiar for our team, but it's simply this. We're to love God, obey His Word. Love God, obey His Word. It comes from John 14, 23. Jesus said in John 14, 23, All who love me will obey what I say. I love this next part. My Father will love them and we will come and make our home in each of them. You know, in my home, one of the best ways to spell love is O-B-E-Y. When we obey, we, we show that we, we truly love. I think it's amazing to, to be able to do that. You know, many of the 13 
who were on mission in Kenya gave up vacation, bonuses, their own hard money, earned money, not because they wanted to fly 50 hours on a plane or because they love me. It's because they love the Lord and they have a heart for those whom the Lord loves. Those folks that went, uh, they don't ask for honor, but, but they deserve it. But I, I just want to just want to point them out to you. So let's look, take a look at this picture. Uh, let's take a look at the team. Um, you guys know most of them, so let me just uh, make sure that I let you know who they are. But we'll start at the top right. We've got the attorneys. We've got Glenna, and working our way down, then we got Paul and their son, Peter. Next, the guy in the green who has many different names now from going uh, with us is Philip uh, Dubeck. Um, the one in the back is Tom Curie. Then you see me, Sarah, and we've got Grayson and Blair, Jamie, Arpita, Tracy, Lolly, and then of course uh, our, our beloved pastor, uh, Mara Wanyoki. This, this team, I uh, just want you to know that they, they knocked it out of the park, and I'm so proud of them. Um, not just for what they did, but for who they are. You know, when you spend two weeks in a place unfamiliar to you, you're going to learn some different things. And, and so, if I can, in the next few moments, I just want to share some of the things that we learned, if you guys are cool with that. So, one of the first things that we learned was, and is, that God chooses to use us and to move when we are uncomfortable. It's a concept for many of us Americans that's very foreign to us. We live to be comfortable. We do everything we can to make sure that we have plenty of food, plenty of provisions, a nice house, cars to drive. You know, one of the most things that was most mind-blowing for some of our Kenyan friends when I talked to them, you mean you drive everywhere you go? They used to, they walk everywhere that they go. And so, one of the things, though, is that we learned that God moves when we're uncomfortable. So some of the things that we were uncomfortable with, a different culture, different languages, different food, mosquitoes, poverty that was in your face, long working days, kids with serious skin disease, kids without proper shoes, little to no sleep, Babies peeing on you. You know, I could, I could go on. But those are things that we're uncomfortable. But when we were uncomfortable, it was amazing how God chose to show up. I want to have a couple of folks come up uh, right now uh, who, who uh, got to be a part of, of being on mission. So, um, Peter and uh, Jane, will you guys come up for just a second? Woo! Yeah, give them a round of applause, please. I'm so thankful that uh, that these folks said yes, and uh, we'd, we'd love to hear all the stories, and, and I want you guys, with the 13 people that were able to go, um, spend some time asking them questions, and the things are, as you can imagine, after after being gone for two weeks and spending all the time that we spent on the plane, things are a little raw, but I think it's in those raw moments that we have an ability to hear some of the stories. So, here I'll start with you. What is, uh, got scared, don't jump on me. Um, What's, what's something that uh, after after spending two weeks on mission in Kenya, what's something that, that sticks out the most to you? Is there, is there something that sticks out most to you? Uh, it was uh, probably that, uh, that the, the children there, they had so little that they, they had nothing at all. And then coming back and seeing a lot of children here, like there's like a big difference, honestly, because like the, the children here, like, you know, I'm not saying that they aren't happy, it's just that they're always expecting more in a way. And the children there, they expected nothing more or nothing less. They just rolled with it and they were the happiest kids I've ever seen. Like they're there was a little girl with no shoes and like like holes all over her shirt and like 
the nastiest clothes you can think of, but she had like the biggest smile you would ever seen from a little girl. And like that's the biggest thing. So Jamie, I, um, is there something that you wish you would have known uh, before you headed off uh, um, to Kenya? Is there something you wish you would have known now that you've been over there? Is there something you wish you would have known before you headed off? Well, besides how hard it is to spend 16 hours in a plane, <laughs> I think you can't ever prepare, no matter how much we read or how many meetings we have, or um, you can't ever prepare for what it's going to be like when you're actually there. And in addition to that, re-entry, what we call re-entry, um, I wish I would have known that this was these days coming home are going to be hard. Um, Peter, is there, a, is there a moment that you can think of where you really saw God show up in a, in a, in a cool way? Uh, before we went on the trip, I was kind of, uh, I was praying that, you know, I, I would be able to at least make one friend there, like, you know, at least impact somebody. And, um, when we first met the students, it was very awkward. Like we kind of were trying to get past the language barrier. They knew very little English, and um, it was just very hard. And um, there was Chris, the little baby, and um, uh, Mara's son. And I, we were going to this safari zoo, and um, and when we went there, uh, we were looking at the monkeys, and Chris saw me. And he was being held by his mom, and I'm being nice and I waved at him. And then he patted his mom, and then also just lunged at me off his mom. And I was kind of like, okay, like I'll catch the baby. And for the rest of the trip, he stuck by me and like wanted to hold my hand and was wanting to show me all the animals. And I don't know, it was just it kind of like reassured me that I would be able to make friends, and that there was no need to worry because he was the the smallest kid there, like, just wanting to hang out with me. So Jamie, is there a, uh, is there a snapshot of a moment in time that you'll remember from the trip that, that you'll, you'll carry with you? Um, Isaac, for sure. The day that Isaac, a little boy, sat next to me during story time and I looked down and saw this just very horrible wound on his leg. He was infected with flies in it. Um, that's not something that is our reality here. And I, I told you that in that moment, I didn't know what to do because all I kept hearing was at the meeting when you said, you're gonna see things there that we can't do anything about, we're not there to fix things. And so I didn't know what to do with what I was seeing. And so I just started praying for him. And um, I just felt an urge to find out at least, can we do something to help him? Because that's just not right. And so talk to Sarah. And, she, we ended up um, getting a translator because he didn't speak English just to make sure that he was okay with us cleaning him up. We had band-aids and neosporin and baby wipes and that's it. And this poor boy needed a lot more than that, but that's what we did. Sarah cleaned him up and we sent him home with band-aids and baby wipes and neosporin. And the way that he held on to that bag was um, just precious. That was really special and um, that is, Every day, multiple times a day, that is, I remember Isaac. I'll never forget him, and I pray for him that God will take the meager things that we had and multiply them and heal his leg. Thank you guys for, for so much for being um, on mission and, and uh, to say yes to go, Kenya. You guys give him a round of applause. We learned that God moves when we're uncomfortable. We also were able to live out something that was really cool for me is that one of our core values as a church is to do everything through relationship. And so our vision for our the mission that we were on was, was simply this, is that we would pour into Kenyan students so that they could pour in to Kenyan kids. And uh, of course, that gets its, its biblical basis um, from Ephesians 4.12, which simply says this to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. 
And so we, we're, we're working with two different churches and we're working with uh, a group of about 15 Kenyan students and we're doing everything we can to, to build them up. We're spending time doing team working activities, some things that Mark pulled me aside and says, I just want you to know, we did, we did some team building the first Saturday when there he goes, nobody in Kenya has ever seen anything like this. These students are doing something that nobody in Kenya has ever done. But one of the things that we learned from all of that was that you can't build up the saints to do the work unless you build a relationship. And it's where we take the model of I do, we do, you do. Um, and one of the things that I can tell you from our trip is, from, from the mission is that we didn't do it. We didn't spend any time on I do. We started with we do. And very quickly, we went to you do. What I, what I really love about what we saw in Kenya was that our internal goal is we did six days of VBS. It's three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon at the two churches. What I can tell you is, guys, that's exhausting, okay? Uh, about 300 kids total that we saw, um, exhausting. But our internal goal was by day five for our Kenyan students to be leading. What I can tell you is really incredible and is so exciting for me to tell you is by day two they had it. They didn't need us anymore. They got this thing figured out, and they were rolling, and they did it better than we could because you know what? Kenyan students know Kenyans better than Americans do. And so proud of them, so proud of how they worked, and they just did an amazing job. And we, we were able to, in some respects, push them to the forefront of ministry because they learned a valuable lesson our Kenyan students did, and that was that God had equipped them to do the work that, that they had in front of them. And it all started from two years ago when Ren was on the bus in Kenya, and he was, he was showing the, the Kenyan students a game or something, and, and Maura looked back, and he saw all the students with Ren, and there was only like six of them at the end, but he said, those are my leaders. They're not my future leaders. They're, they're the leaders of the church today, and, and I'm happy to tell you that that group has, has doubled, and, and they're doing the work. And we believe in them, and you should believe in them, and I'm, and I'm so thankful. One of the things I can tell you from proof from, the, from, from all of that, of, of the equipping and the things that we saw, is this, this next picture. Um, this is Sarah sitting with the group that would be teaching Sunday school the next Sunday, one at Kenal and one at Makuyu. Sarah just said, hey, let's, let's get together and let's, let's talk about Sunday school. And then when she got there, she didn't say a word. And what I can tell you is, this group here of Kenyan students, I got to witness it firsthand, one of the best Sunday school times I've ever seen. And they came up with their own name. And it gives us hope. It gives us hope that, yes, we were there for a time, but those Kenyan students are on mission. And they're gonna change the country of Kenya because of what they're doing. And so it just was a it was a very healing time for us to see that. And we realized that it came down to relationship. Another thing that we learned was so we need to, to live out scripture. We need to choose to live out scripture. Acts 242 says this. It's talking about the early church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and the prayer. On a daily basis, that's what we did. We learned the truth of God's Word together. We were together. We ate together. We broke bread and we prayed. Another thing that we did that was really special to me is that anytime we were on the bus and we were going to one of the churches, we were singing. And we sang um, an interesting mix of Kikuyu and English and even some Swahili, and, and it was special. You see, when we were together, there was joy. And that's our job, is to bring joy. One of my favorite songs uh, was sung by Samson. He led it several times when we were there. It's, it's entitled, He Has Given Me. It's a Nigerian song, sung in English, with an emphasis that all we have comes from God. So we sing things like, 
the shoes I have, He has given me. The clothes I wear, He has given me. The food that I have, He has given me. This is a favorite one of mine. Even the car that I will drive, He has given me. And then, of course, you know, if you know me, I have to add some things to that. And so I get to add live a little bit. But for my Kenyan friends, He has given me. And finally, as we are on mission, as we continue to be on mission, we learn to keep moving forward. We, were, we learned this valuable moniker again. Some will tell you that short-term missions don't work. I can tell you that we don't have a short-term missions goal. We believe in a lifelong, lasting relationship. And that's what we're continuing to do. All I can tell you about being on mission in Kenya is that if you want to know if it's working, Ask our Kenyan students. Ask them what they think. The bonds of ongoing relationship, driven by humility, changes everything. Lives change here, lives change there. And I'm thankful for a group that says yes. And I'm also thankful for a group back on the other side of the world, students who are saying yes and saying yes to love the next generation of Kenyans. I'm thankful that I serve the God of the universe who doesn't have a short-term goal for me. What sticks out most to me as I reminisce about our mission is Ephesians 3.20. It says this, Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can all ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. We don't know all the stories of how this mission is, is continuing to change the lives of Kenya. But we do know this. We serve a God who can do that. He can do more than we can ask or imagine. I'll leave you one more time with this picture of the bus leaving and part of our hearts being left there. But I end with the words that Danny had for you guys last week. And simply this, God's desire for you and me is to be the change we want to see in this world. And may we be a church that brings joy to people far from God globally. Will you pray with me? Lord, I'm thankful for an ability day to, to just share just a, a brief glimpse into Lord, what you're up to. Lord, I'm thankful that you're moving just as strongly in, in Kenya as you are here. And Lord, it tells us in your word that, Lord, your gospel, your good news is advancing and forceful people are taking a hold of that. And Lord, I pray that we would be a church that would do that. Lord, that we would choose to bring joy to those far from you. Lord, help wherever we walk. Whether it be in our homes, our schools, as our kids go back. Well, I pray that this church would send out missionaries throughout this world. What I'm reminded is, is for many schools, it's already started back, some start tomorrow, that the greatest mission field in the world is the public school system. Or help us to love our, our community our states, our country, our globe, our world, as much as you love them. Lord, they don't need some, some broken down religion. Lord, they need a relationship with you. So Lord, I pray that that would be the case. Lord, that I pray that when we walk out of this place, that we, be, that we choose to be on mission for you. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.